ایتالیایی‌ها میگن که امریو نو سپرولا ادیسیو نو سورال یعنی اینکه زنبوری که نیش نداره اصل نمیده گفته بودیم که اگر کسی کشته شود کشور رو وارد فاز جدیدی خواهیم کرد یعنی پلن بی چطور شد محمد و حاولید سید محمد حسینی بیکام ا پولیتیکال لیدر فرام ا ساکسفول شرمن تو فایند دی انسر پرهاپس ایت وود بی بیتر تو استارت فرام دی بیگینینگ هو ایز سید محمد حسینی سید محمد حسینی بورن جولای 4 1969 ان دی سیتی اف ری تهران ایز ان ایرانیان تلویزیون پرسونالیتی پرفورمر اکتر دایرکتور اند شو هوست He graduated from the University of Isfahan with a degree in physics. In 1989, he shone as a writer and actor in this university with the theater productions of Ganbar Ali Becomes a Doctor and The Lousy Performer, which was welcomed by students, professors, artists, and staffs of the university. Not long after, He followed with successful productions of Under the City Sky and Marriage to Yourself. As an actor, he had more than 1000 nights of performance on his resume before beginning his television career. Hosseini's television career began in 1994 as a writer, director, and actor with sketches for the program Nowruz 73. His career grew with the following programs: Nimnega in 40 episodes, Hello Tehran in 50 episodes, in parentheses in 40 episodes, and Tilip in 13 episodes. Hosseini reached the peak of his popularity in 1995 as the host of a program called The Grand Game Show. aired in 52 episodes. His unique style earned him accolades as Iran's favorite media personality. He got married in 1988 and has one son. After the assassination of Feridun Farrakhzad, considered for many years to be Iran's most popular performer and media personality, who tragically was assassinated by Iranian intelligence service in Germany the mantle was passed to Mohammad Hosseini who to this day holds this status among Iranians although Hosseini started his career in television in 1994 he owes his fame to the Seymour game show the theme song of Seymour game show program which later became the symbol of a powerful political movement was composed by him بخون میدم به صورت زندگی به صورت زندگی هرچند با هم میجنگی اما رفیق رای در این دعای رنگی به زندگی هرچند با هم میجنگی اما رفیق راهی در انتهای رنگی تو سبخت زندگی هرچند با هم میجنگی اما رفیق راهی در انتهای Unlike many Iranian celebrities, he tried to avoid politics. At the height of his fame and popularity, he left Iran in 2005. While he had been selected by a popular vote for several years in a row as the most loved TV personality in Iran, but this path wasn't easy for him at all. Hosseini initially relocated to Dubai, primarily because he was pressured by television media authorities, which are government-regulated and hold a monopoly in Iran. to publicly support one of the presidential candidates in 2004. مدیر شبکه‌ها را صدا کرد گفتم با اینا درگیر نشو. اینا نمی‌فهمن اصلا این حرفو. دستور از بالا رسید شما تو کمپین نباشید. After Hosseini's immigration to Dubai, the Iranian regime repeatedly tried to bring him back to Iran because they knew that such a well-loved public figure could become dangerous for them. At first, they tried to bribe him to return. Then the threats started. Finally, when they saw that neither of these methods would work, they started a new game. Regime Iran, the Iranian regime, like all other dictatorships, start threatening and persuading him to come back to Iran. 
Iranian intelligence agents contacted Hosseini and suggested that he collaborate with them to establish a satellite network news channel. This news would be presented as oppositional propaganda that the regime would use to further its own agenda. بچه ها تلاب به شما پیشناد دارن یه تلویزیون بزن خب ببین خبرهایی بهت میدیم که به نفت تو به ما فوش هم میدیم تو تلویزیون ها الان هم میبینیم دیگه ها بح 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 He never cooperated with the regime Regime Iran A few years later Iranian regime start using this strategy especially after sudden emergence of several Farsi language satellite network channel those are broadcasting commercial via Iran or Dubai mm. چیزی که سازمان اطلاعات به من گفت یعنی 85 درصد بیزنسمن های لس آنجلس اونایی که پول دارن مال اونا در اینجا بود که دولت ایمان At that point the UAE government refused to extend the visa for him and his family under pressure from Iran so he was forced to leave Dubai the next destination was Cyprus But Cyprus also proved to be an unsafe place for Hosseini and his family because the country under pressure from Iran issued an illegal deportation letter for Hosseini and his family. Amin avval umad ke khod to zan o bachat az Qibris deport. Bafandi. Tu Qibris shoma agar bachat to fisi madrasa dawlati va ye dun khone ejare kon nemizam. Nemtunam nemizam. Aftim ingilis. Go bafandi. آسی فلان کشور گفت چون مثلا من به همشون هم گفتم من با جمهوری اسلامی مشکل دارم درگیرم با جمهوری اسلامی میخواد ویزا بده بده میخواد نگه قرار ما برگردیم کشته بشیم بشیم دیگه تو رفتیم سفارت آمریکا گفتیم آقا ما مشکل داریم ورود محبوب تن the arrival of the most popular Iranian TV personality into the United States since 1979 was a news bomb Hosseini was interviewed widely upon his arrival in an attempt to increase viewership prominent news outlets such as radio farda and voice of america attempted to entice him into appearing in their programs and even suggested to their viewers that there are plans to have him more permanently on their channel with his own shows however when these media outlets realized that Husseini could not be bowed and his scope of opinion was miles away from there then quickly boycotted him which continues till today his first destination in the world of Persian language satellite TV channels was Pars TV Husseini made his first appearance as a guest on a program called a special guest but his popularity among the audience was so high that Pars TV network gave him his own show called M Show. M Show was a political satire program in which Hosseini read the news of the day, presented with his own special brand of humor. His humor quickly found its place among sympathetic viewers. However, he also attracted criticism. In one of his most famous commentaries, he discussed the mark of prostration on the forehead of Mullah Reshari, suggesting that it is a symbol of false religiosity. گفتم حسین الان به اثر مقاس که پاسخ شومن به شومن باشه. یه چیزی تو ذهن در انتقام قتل فرخزاد این حرکت این اول Husseini was 10 years ahead of his time in protesting Iran's regime by disclosure controversial news. The same style of public opposition is now being mimicked by dozens of so-called whistleblowers. His large following inspired Hosseini to start a political commentary program called Goodnight Iran on Pars TV. پس شیعه با نماز جمعه تو مخالفه میگه حرامه یعنی اون کسی که الان داره میره توی سی و سه سال میدونم میشینه حرامه اصلا From the very first days this program attracted the attention of viewers and challenged many of their beliefs Unfortunately this platform did not believe to freedom of speech as much as they claimed 
A significant feature of Hosseini's programs was his live, direct, and clever communication with his audience over social media networks available at the time, especially Facebook, a unique tactic that put him ahead of the curve. Today, many political figures who appear on live feeds did not even know what social media was at that time, or if they did, they had very few followers. Meanwhile, Hussein was communicating with his audience in their home in real time, before it was possible to host live video program on social network platform. Hosseini's last destination in Persian satellite media was his brief presence on the Channel One network. It's interesting, he had only one guest his program, Mansur Usanli, who later assassination attempt meant to frame restart at its leader Hussein. In the last program of Goodnight Iran on Satellite, Hosseini proposed a plan to change the regime in Iran, the first of many more to come from other opposition groups. He also asked the people to join him in this plan to overthrow the regime. But the people turned their backs on him. That's why the most popular Iranian TV personality bade goodbye to all Persian language media. But he returned even stronger this time. Welcome to Welcome to This was how a huge movement began with a podcast, Restart, shared in a simple telegram channel called Pasto News. Restart, as its name implies, was a plan to start again from scratch. February 1, 2016, the first Restart program was aired. Certainly, no one thought that a one-hour monologue would have such a huge impact. And of course, the reason for this impressive impact was the content of the program. Target man half million مردم جهانن که قطعا از ریستارت عبور خواهند کرد. یعنی حتما میمیرن. Mysticism and introspection were the main topics of this program. Topics that made the audience reflect deeply on their way of thinking. ریستارت دق دق است. یعنی کسانی ریستارت رو میتونن گوش کنن که اصلا دقدقه فهمیدن دارن اینا یعنی فهمیدن یه دقدقه است نکته جالب برام ریستارت پروگرام فیچر تاپیکس ها بین سایلنسد و سنسورد فور سنتریز سنس دی پروگرام فرست ایرد ایتس آدینس هز اینکریسد دو تو دی دیپ فندمنتل اند اینترستینگ کوشچنز حسینی ادرسز دی کوشچنز دت منی ور ایذر انوور اف or did not dare to ask. من سوالم از تو اینه محمد ابن عبدالله قبل از اینکه جبرئیل رو ببینه دین محمد چی بوده؟ چرا این روحانیت شیع و سنی قبل جبرئیل رو توضیح نمیده؟ As expected, establishment religious leaders from various branches began to attack the program because it challenged the status quo. They repeatedly and forcefully sent messages to Hosseini to refrain from continuing the restart program. Hosseini himself mentioned that he was frequently contacted by religious representatives of Christianity, Judaism, Islam, and even Zoroastrianism, but he continued to challenge them. The huge avalanche that started with the pebbles of the first restart programs was accelerating rapidly. And every day, more and more people from different walks of life started tuning in. Hosseini repeatedly asked the leader of Iranian regime to avoid politicizing this program, while they ignored his request and started threatening his family instead. 
من خواهش میکنم که لطف کنید این برنامه رو سیاسی نکنید محبت کنید این برنامه رو سیاسی نکنید خواهش میکنم این برنامه رو عزیز من سیاسی نکنید بچه بسید جوی من من هنوز نگفتم که سعید امامی چرا علا رقمی که تمام حکومت و مسئولین تلاش کردن زنده بمونه مرد و چگونه مرد این آخرین التیماتوم حسین نیست بشه ما So Hosseini started broadcasting Good Night Iran programs again and crossed every red line the regime drew, going as far as to attack the defenders of the fake holy shrine in Syria, who he named Pumpkin Martyrs, a term derived from Rumi's story of the maid and lady. On Good Night Iran, he taught the audience how to think critically, distinguish friends from foes in the political realm. And further, he mandated to develop collective wisdom and social awareness. Finally, what the Iranian regime feared would happen, happened. The restart audience turned from an esoteric group into a political opposition, with millions of supporters inside and outside Iran. Hosseini repeatedly spoke about the existence of millions of restart supporters, which was met with disbelief by many analysts and other groups opposing the regime. This is where Restart's challenge started. Man ham yek Restartian. Hosseini asked Restartees to write Restart on their palms and send the videos and photos to Pasto News Channel. This way, they could protect the safety of the Restartees by sharing only the videos which were not disclosing the identity of the restartees contributing to this challenge. The audience for his programs was growing every day, and his Telegram channel reached more than 130,000 followers, Instagram more than 178,000, and his Facebook page grew to more than 300,000 followers in a very short time. It is worth mentioning that he once had 100,000 of followers on his social media channel, while most of well-known leaders of other Iranian opposition groups had between 9 to 14,000 followers at the same time. More interestingly, his Telegram channel had 130k member, while Pavel Durov had 40k followers. Various opposition groups tried to deny Hosseini and his supporters, accusing restartees of resorting only to writing on their palms and not being politically effective. So Hosseini raised the second challenge. The next challenge was the Charshambe Suri challenge. Emsal Charshambe Suri, restarti ha Iran ra baham khandi. Sedaay talqa ha. و پریدن از آتش را این بار به یاد انسان کامل خواهند گرفت Since the real secret behind this ancient day was revealed in the restart programs, restartees knew why the Iranian regime had been trying for decades to suppress this tradition. So that year, Sharshambi Suri was celebrated more passionately than any other year. The regime could no longer deny the existence of this opposition, but since the presidential election date was close, they could not retaliate to suppress any social movement. Oppositional voices then claimed that the presence of millions of people observing Sharshambi Suri had nothing to do with Rista, so Husseini posed a different challenge that left no room for doubt. برای اینکه تو دهانی به دهان بسیجیان بزنیم، ماری استارتیا، این هفته، کف خیابانها، ستادهای انتخاباتی، دیوارهای مساجد و هر جایی را که برسیم رنگ میزنیم. This challenge was so powerful that no one could deny it. because people who were still unaware of the restart movement could see the effects of this challenge in broad daylight with their own eyes. Even the media that used to serve the Iranian regime reacted to it, but tried to turn the truth upside down, reducing it to the small battles between supporters of the two presidential candidates.
Hosseini officially boycotted the election, stating that anyone who votes in the regime's election is betraying their country. We start was considered the main enemy of Iranian regime when it became clear that it puts ideology to action. The next challenge, the sonic bomb challenge, directly targeted the regime and its founder. The perfect timing of this challenge and the way it was carried out by the restartees had very serious consequences for Iran's regime because it hit the concept which was supposed to be the regime's power, ideology. The sound of celebrations and fireworks on the day of the regime's founder's death dealt a severe blow to the body of its ideological supporters and brainwashed IRGC and besieged members. Many of these members, who were heavily influenced by the intelligence services propaganda and brainwashing techniques, started to question the popularity of the regime, its ideology, and its leaders. The blow was so severe that Iranian regime officially responded. The regime did not want to mention restart in their coverage directly. Instead, a plot was put into motion to fake a terrorist attack on Ayatollah Khomeini's shrine. In this way, Khamenei declared the regime's position. <laughs> Although many analysts and political activists at the time did not understand the reason behind using the fire at will keyword by the regime, Hosseini was well aware that the fire at will command was in fact to counter restart. Of course, there was another secret behind this code. Khamenei's death and the lack of leadership and an ideological chasm in Iran demand fire at will. The Iranian regime considered the hypothesis to be treasonous and react with utmost brutality to whoever uttered it. This secret has been concealed for a long time because the regime knew very well that by announcing this news, they would lose much of their popular support. Hosseini's declaration was so threatening that it prompted the regime's leaders to react. Hosseini spoke about the Russian-British bipolarity of the Iranian regime long ago, naming Khamenei and Rafsanjani as the agent of those government. He revealed the detail of this secret in Good Night Iran. خود آقای هاشمی به نوعی میگن که آقای خامنه ای رو انتخاب کرده پس فکر میکرده که دو گروه خودشه اما در یک تاریخی روس ها مهره ای در داخل این سیستم وارد میکنن به نام آقای خامنه ای که در اونجا هم تحصیل کرده من اینو 15 سال پیش میدونستم حسینی explained in a special episode of Good Night Iran program that Rafsan Jani was an English pawn presenting their interest خیلی سربستی و مرقی برای تمام فصول میشه یعنی یک حزب درست میشه و هاشمی نمیدونه که این حزب قراره که چی کار کنه چالش های ریستاد ماهیت We start challenge that have made it clear that majority of Iranian media are biased against restart covering minor news items while completely ignoring restart For this reason the target of next challenge was the media itself حال ما فرصت به شبکه بی بی سی دادیم صد و پنجا دی بیس هزار کامنت بچه های سارت گذاشتن تا اونها مینیموم فقط یک بار فوش بدن به ریه سارت یا حداقل بگن اپوزیسیون قوی به نام ریه سارت موجود است اما بی بی سی سکوت کرد Hundreds of thousands of comments were also left on the websites and Instagram and other social media pages of Persian media outlets backing other opposition groups and leaders asking them only one question why don't you talk about restart? This was how the true nature of these media and their true agenda was exposed to public. Not only was there no response to this question, 
but many restartees accounts were blocked and their comments deleted. Many Iranians, including Restarif, were shocked by the behavior of political leaders. Restarif, who had supported other political parties, were in disbelief. That's why the target of next challenge was those political leaders and celebrities. In Haftar Haftar Chalish Fosh, Minamin, Chera, Bedodim, Yek, Iranian Pachakari Kahanus, Bekin Konan, Busi, the Nasapad, the Shah, Vadi, Fadil, Siar, Mohammed, Bakadis, Midun, and Siar, Sad Madar, Tarbiat Konin, Yo, Bain, Opposition, Hobbe, Fahmun, and Kishoma, Secular, Nisi, Chandar, Sad, Bell, Secular. آزادی بیان است من میتونم تو خیابون به همه خوش خار مادر بدم و من نمیتونم بگیرم In this very short term challenge Hosseini exposed the true nature of many of those political leaders and the level of ongoing deceit to their supporters It appeared that the regime had collaborated with other opposition groups on one strategy to censor and boycott restart the next challenge was to break a censorship barrier. We are starting as a rust up on the home of one. Bossang, B, Shisha Madores, Macon, Hoya Dolati, Utubus Hoysher Kadebohead, Moshina Police, New and Tezami, Hoygo Hoya Basij, Har on Chizik Marbut Bedolat as Hamlemikon, and Mashisha on Robe Poing, Hohand Richt. Like former challenges, Hosseini emphasized that Restart's red line is harming any living being, including plants, animals, and humans. That's why many participants chose to carry out this challenge at nights, less busy hours, and less crowded areas in order to abide by Hosseini's guidelines. As predicted, the media continue with its boycott policy. So Husseini increased the intensity of challenges. اگر تو بیست سوم آذر ایران آتش باران شد به انتقام گرفتار شدن وند تاها و گارد ویژه ما در خارج و در داخل ایران اون وقت شب به خیران ادامه پیدا خواهد کرد. در غیر این صورت قطع خواهد شد و بیست آذر در از کلید فاز دو بدون این که ما بخوایم خوردیم شد. This was the only challenge that the media and the opposition responded to, and predictably, they all described it as a violent act. من بارها و بارها گفتم که هر کنه عمل کردی که تو هم با خشونت، ترور، تخریب یا این کنه عوامل باشه صد در صد باش مخالف هستم. یک اغلیتی میتونن پیه و سلا برود در عملیات خشونت آمیز رو به تن بمانه. این رژیم هم از بین نمی روید اونهایی که شما رو تشویق می کنند به خشونت تردید کنید در صداقت اونها Such globalist puppets neglected to acknowledge that Hosseini used exactly the same secular discourse to deliver Restart's message Hosseini had already explained the meaning and different aspects of secularism in multiple different Good Night Iran programs before this challenge happened. That's why Hosseini had chosen only ideology can correct ideology as restarts political slogan. بفرمایید که خون از دماغ چه کسی پایین آمده است؟ سر چه کسی شکسته شده است؟ ما به مردم ایران فهموندیم که اگر کودکی در عراق دست و پایش قطع می شود در افغانستان در کردستان در سوریه و یمن و در لبنان مقصر اصلی نطفه تروریست جمهوری اسلامی ایران است ما به ملت ایران این را فهموند all opposition have been claiming that they believe in separation of religion and politics, but the fire challenge proved that they none of them truly believe in that notion. Hosseini emphasized that the target of the fire challenge were the bases of the IRGC, Basij, a military-type institution whose bases are located within every Shia mosque in Iran. مسجد اهل سنت ما آتش نذاریم همین دلیل برای اینی که ما به مسجد نمیخوام حمله کنیم 
ما پایگاه بسیج داریم آتیش بزنیم این پایگاه بسیج رو اگر جمهوری اسلامی بذاره تو کلیسا صبح کلیسا آتیش می‌زنیم چون ما هم کاری نداریم بشه هم دیگه کاری نداریم آقا پایگاه بسیج مکان شستشو مغزی دختر و پسر مردم بردن اونجا بهشون چیزایی یاد دادن که برن انتحاری انجام بدن ما پایگاه بسیج رو داریم می‌زنیم و هر کی میگه مسجد یه دلیل داریم مسجد اهل سنت اگه ما با مسجد مخالفیم چرا اهل سنت آتیش نزدیم Basij bases are one of the main organs of the IRGC. Basij is a militia-type institution, and its members disguise themselves as regular people and spy among public. They have no official uniforms, and in many cases are used as regime's forceful feast to shut down any movement with violence. The Restart Movement fought it directly years before the IRGC was declared a terrorist organization by the United States. The Iranian regime could not ignore this widespread social movement anymore and finally acknowledged Restart on their media channels. Restart had openly defied the regime's pretentious authority and shattered its image with the incineration of besieged bases. Dalgaki ke dar America nishaste و تحت عنوان ریستار حرکاتی انجام میده فرمان صادر میکنه به عنوان حمله به مسجد حمله به حسینی حمله به پایگاه بسیج اما دی واز تو لیف فور رژیم تو تیک اکشن بیکاز ریستارت هاز فاوند ایت پلیس تو پیپلز هارتس حسینی هاد پرپیرد دی پابلیک فور ریستارتس فاینل موو بیفور فولی اکچوالایزینگ ایت بای دی چالنجز هی ریزد اوور دی کورس اوف دت ایر He knew better than anyone that a revolution requires a philosophy, policy, plan, practice, and program. This was accomplished via the Restart and Good Night Iran programs and by having followers carry out the challenges. Over the course of the previous year, these challenges poked holes in the regime's carefully constructed facade. forming a movement that engaged more than 140 cities within Iran. This wave was so huge and sudden that it took Iranians and other opposition groups by storm. Many opposition leaders, who had been absent from the political sphere for a long time, attempted to come back and hijack the situation for their own benefit. All of them were fully aware that the root of these events was the restart movement. So they tried, unsuccessfully, to make an allegiance with its leader. Unfortunately, their maneuvering had far more influence than expected. That's why Husseini called the restart to return their home and abandon the uprising. Left the revolution be hijacked and 1978 disaster be repeated. The mother asked the dream. مسبب این می شویم که مردم از چاه به چاه تر هدایت کنیم بازگشت ایران به 1357 حکومت نظامی مشخص از طرف سپا و امنیتی شدن پای تخت ایران و بیشتر شهرها کل ریستارتی ها به خانه های خود باز خواهند گشت و فقط وندتا ها و گارد ویژه ما آماده باش خواهند Restart challenges shook the pillars of the regime so severely that it altered its calendar of national observances. December 29th, an important date reserved for propaganda celebrating the regime and which Restart chose for its revolt was erased. رژیم ایران که سقوط خودش رو بسیار نزدیک می‌دید سن... Internationally the regime played the victim publicly acknowledging that the new restart was behind of the attempt revolution One US residents took to social media to order the killing of 120 members of our security forces Leader Rissini realized that the traitors in the guise of opposition intend to use the ignorance of people to advance their political goals for this reason Through various programs over the years, including Restart and Good Night Iran, he had tried to improve their political understanding. حرف نمیزنه نمیگه که آقا بعد از این رژیم میره ما چه چه رژیمی داریم؟ حکومت دموکرات مردمی. از کجا تو میفهمی یعنی چی؟ بعدا من از کجا میفهمم یعنی چی؟ مثل جمهوری اسلامی. 
تلویزیون هایی که پولشون معلوم نیست از کجا میاد هزار دلار مثلا دارن یه میلیون دلار دارن هزینه میکنن حق معرفی آدم سیاسی نداره میگیری از دو تا حزب تحویل یه نفر میدی برای گرفتارش بعد کشته بدی من میگم نه ساده جون نخوری دوباره سال 57 نباشه وقتی ما به اسلام فوش بدیم یه هم یه به 20 میلیون فوش بدیم 20 میلیون میرن وقتی به سنی فوش بدیم یه هم سنی ها میرن 2 میلیون 2 میلیون رو داریم میدیم تو بقل جمهوری اسلامی آیا این فوش شدن چه سو بکنیم He revealed many political secrets in his programs تلس بینی نوشت داری همه روزنامه های جهان الان تلس بینی اون وقت مقض شما نسبت به این نوشته بعد ریاکشن داشته باشه یا این نوشته رو مثبت برداشت میکنه یا منفی برداشت میکنه یا دوچار شک و شکر میشه این از این سهالت خواهدشت جادوگر قدیم یه نفر بود الان تمام ستلایت ها شبکه خبر جمهوری اسلامی ایران الان جادوگر برای حکومت نقش جادوگر رو بازی میکنه یعنی آقای سعید امامی مطلبی رو میذاره روی میز که ببینن که چه جور ممکن است احتمال تغییر رژیم بشه شماره یک این تر نبشه که احتمال تغییر رژیم ری استارته یعنی <تصفيق> اگر ری استارتی پخش بشه و مردم طرفدار این برنامه باشن احتمال تغییر رژیم هست سعید امامی بالا این طرح نوشته که ایرانی ها شدیدن عاشق حافظ و سعدی و مولوی هستن پس از مرگ خامنی به حضب رفتنجان After Khamenei's death and the elimination of Rafsanjani the Iranian regime had lost two of its main figures it was time to prepare people for change But Ristat leader had already explained the principle of proposed governing system in his Rise of Cyrus Empire program. He explained the government run by wise and merited elected people. In 16 episodes of Rise of Cyrus's Empire, Hosseini meticulously goes over the basic principles of aristocratic constitutions, governing systems run by wise elected people. As he mentioned years ago, we need a benevolent constitution to have a dynamic and flawless society, or in his own words, in order to avoid wolves, corrupted politicians, in critical positions of power, we need to rebuild our political infrastructure. Don't be like the past few years. Let's do a new city. We don't need to kill you. ما باید این چند تا آدمی که شاس گلون بالا هستن که فکر میکنن آدم مهمی هستن با پول من و تو داماد شدن اینا رو بفرسیم برن تو زندگیش جنگل بکنم پیشنهاد من این بود که شهرسازی رو قوی کنیم شهرسازی رو وقتی قوی کنیم گرگی تو شهر دیگه نمیاد دموکراسی رو به صورت یک شهر اگر بفهمیم درک کنیم و بخوایم درستش کنیم من قول به شما میدم گرگی رئیس جمهور دیگه نمیشه و طرح دارم اینا رو توضیح دارم که بعدا اما اپوزیسیون هاست All other oppositions were years behind him and his idea They were only protesting in the streets And since they didn't have any clearly defined agenda or goal They got many people killed They ridiculed the uprising of January 2018 by name calling it the egg uprising In order to belittle wise people who stood up for the fundamental changes Hosseini was always asserted that we only revolt for the evolution of awareness and reducing others' suffering. They tried to hijack the attempted revolution in January 2018 by claiming they instigated in the riots and issued more than 2,000 calls for rallies in just a few months following the initial uprising. The most famous among those calls to action were known as Reza Shah's mummy and the Capsian Sea Deal rally. But Iranians weren't swayed. Hosseini already talked about the political game behind the Caspian Sea long time before all oppositions. We are in the period that we want to go to the area of Caspian or Khazar or Mazandera. We are taxing them to Russia. We are going to give them money and we are going to give them a lot of money. اینا برای اینکه مردم رو حواس مردم و نوع نگاه مردم وردنن از دریای خزر یا مازندران بیارن جای دیگه که حواسشون نباشه قرار داده که جاسوس ها بسته بودن از 20 سال پیش که کی این تقسیم بندی انجام بشه خلیج فارس رو علم کرد 
Hosseini knew that aimless calls to protest would not only cost lives, but damage the widespread motivation to overthrow the regime. Hosseini did not want to be involved with gambling the lives of his followers, so he declared the challenge of silence. چالش سکوت ما برای این است که رسانه های جهان باید ما را به رسمیت بشناسند زیرا که اگر رسانه های جهان ما را به رسمیت نشناسند در داخل ایران هر تظاهراتی را که تولید کنیم دیگران در خارج به نام خودشان میزنند خیلی ها سعی کردن که از منی اتم تو یود سایلات تو اسپرد رومر در حسینی هست بین ارسد یا از دید Since Hosseini trained many restartees before his silence challenge, he urged them to take part in the challenge of wisdom's attack on stupidity by entering political discussions with other opposition parties. Contrary to widespread belief, Hosseini's one-year silence not only didn't make the movement inactive, but in February 2019, just before the Warsaw Conference, commonly known as the U.S.-led Middle East in Warsaw, restartees trended the Invite Restart Leader to Warsaw hashtag, calling on world leaders to listen to Hosseini because they believed only he knew how to change the regime. Hosseini returned to the public eye in October 2019. This time, he's published the restart program in video format, which has continued up to 180 programs till today. In response, other opposition parties began their old game when the gasoline price tripled in November 2019. They used this opportunity to attempt imitating the 2018 uprising by calling the public to riot. However, they had no agenda, no clear goals, and no training programs to prepare their followers to overthrow the regime. Unfortunately, this resulted in many Iranians being brutally killed in the streets. The lives were negligible for those opportunities of opposition. Hosseini had warned of such a catastrophe long before the treasonous activities of other opposition groups. But unfortunately, the media censored him once again and distorted and subverted his voice. The result of this great betrayal was the massacre of 1,500 Iranians by the regime. After this tragedy, Hosseini officially warned the regime leaders. We said that if anyone is killed, the country will be in a new phase. That means the plan B. The plan B is the plan B. حتی اگر یک نفر باشد این اعتراضات برای درد هموطنه اعتراضات خور و خواب و خشم و شهبت نیست هواپیمایی سقوط کرده و مردم اومدن به خاطر کسای دیگری که کشته شدن حسینی also promoted demonstrations in support of the victims of the 752 Ukrainian plane crash, and this time warned world leaders to stop supporting the regime of Iran. Half two hours later, after we had this program on Telegram, program 152 Riyasat, the official plan B is now. ممکن است سوال کنید که چیکار کنیم که اپوزیسیون ریاست وارد پلن بی نشه سه تا شرط ساده داره که توضیح میدم یک اتحادیه اروپا و سازمان ملل برن پشت تحریم های پرزیدنت ترامپ و سپاه و بسیج را ارگان تروریست اعلام کنند و فرمانده سپاه و بسیج رو عاملین جنایت علیه بشر دو تا پخش برنامه 152 ریستارت فرمانده سپاه یا فرمانده بسیج رو حذف فیزیکی کنند رو هر جور دلشون میخواد ما قیافه توی این هفته و دو ساعت که میگذره دیگه نبیریم سه فرمانده بسیج و فرمانده سپاه تروریستی تو امن در یک شبکه تلویزیونی ایران بنشینند و رسما به ملت ایران بگن ملت ما گوه خود 
Contrary to many people's beliefs, European presidents and political leaders listened to this ultimatum. Some considered this as another of Hosseini's predictions, a man who has made many accurate predictions in the past. Trump is not Russia. The Americans have never been good with the English people. ترامپ اومده تا شکاف بین روس ها و انگلیسی ها بندازه تا بتونه از این وسط پوان بسیار بزرگی رو بگیره دشمنی دیرینه انگلیسی ها و آمریکایی ها از بطن یعنی در اصل 45 سال پیش رسما اعلام شده که جمهوری اسلامی خیلی تلاش میکنه که بگه نه اینا با هم اینا با هم هستند دستی اصلا اینجوری نیست اینا انگلیسی ها و روس ها همیشه با هم بودن داعش مال انگلستان تو اون منطقه بینیم چه اتفاقی افتاده جمهوری اسلامی مال روساست اردغان مال روساست بشار اسد مال روساست دو ست کشور اون وسط هستن که مال انگلیسی ها الان یهودی های توی اسرائیل هم دارن یه حرکت های انجام میدن پس انگلیس الان با آمریکا دشمنه منافش که داعش رفته رو هوا چون انگلیس تکخوری کرد یه داعش تولید کرد اومد تو عراق و اون منطقه آثار باستانی رو دوزید همه جهان جمع شدن که آمریکا از عراق خارج چه نفت رو داری میخوری ولی اشتباهاتی بوده که دیدن که این لایکی ها داره چه اتفاق میفته اما خوب فکر نکردن و اردوغان اول نفری بود اومد گفتش که آقا تو خدا اجازه بدین اینا با چادر بیان بتونن بیان و همین با همین کلمات مردم رو ترغیب کرد برای اینکه نزدیک کنه حکومت رو به جمهوری اسلامی ترکیه این کتابی که من همه رو تو شب بخیرانا همه رو توضیح دادم میگه همه رو کلا شب بخیرانا توضیح داد چند سالگی وارد سیاست شده و چه جوری به این مقام ها رسیده مگر اینکه اسم کمال درویش یعنی یا پول کمال درویش ها در کنارش باشه یا از گروهی از کشورهای دیگه از سازمان های اطلاعات داره بهش کمک میشه و یا اینا همش یاه و یا اینکه آقای اردوغان آخرین مهره حزب بس است که قرار است که دنیا رو بگیرن جالبه که بیس ایکس انترستینگ من انترنشنال میدیا انکلودینگ اینفو وارد این ایون کیو این آن هرد هیس وویس این سپورد این انلایک ایرانیان میدیا The American News Channel Info Wars Managed by Alex Jones made several programs about Hosseini, and Greg Reese, one of the InfoWars reporters, arranged some interviews with him. Bezudi, Europa, Asir Daesh Khart. The اتفاقی که در میدری سر میفته، من مردم هم گفتم، اروپا یا بعد منتظرش باشه. چون گاورمنت های اروپا به ناحق دارن از رادیکالیسم اسلامی دفاع میکنن پس باید منتظرش باشن که همین بلا روزی سرشون بیاد برای حل رادیکالیسم اسلامیک یا هر دین دیگه باید کاری کنیم تا پدر مادرها و روحانیت اون ادیان از بچگی رو بچه کار نکنن و فکرش جالبه که بدونید Alex Jones ham- It's interesting to know that Alex Jones is the one who led tens of thousands of pro-Trump protesters in Washington, D.C. The patriotic, not the propaganda and delusional part of the QAnon movement, also recognized and defended the restart. This great movement, believed by many to be led by General Michael Flynn, has the same ultimate goals as restart, which is to awaken people around the world by supporting the Patriots. Close communication of General Flynn's Twitter account with the restart leaders at the time can be one of the signs of this close relationship. It's true that restart has an ancient background behind it, but it is a young opposition in the realm of Iranian politics. In less than four years, this movement has achieved much more success in domestic and international politics than any other opposition party in the last 40 years collectively. Hosseini institutionalized critical thinking and the spirit of inquiry in Iranians through the restart programs. He also raised the level of literacy and political awareness of the people 
by revealing many political secrets, tricks, and many behind-the-curtain political movements and decisions with the Good Night Iran programs. Good Night Iran programs educated the public and lessened the poisonous influential grip of other parties and Iranian opposition groups. Since Hosseini believes in political infrastructure reform, he explains and backs the basic principles of aristocratic constitutions inspired by Rumi, Plato, and other out-of-the-box great thinkers and philosophers in his program called Rise of Cyrus's Empire. Hosseini also defined the characteristics of a well-balanced leader, one of them being courage in behavior and in decision-making. In his short tenure as a political leader, Hosseini was the only leader among the Iranian opposition groups who made courageous decisions at the domestic and international level, such as supporting the independence of Iraqi Kurdistan, announcing the cancellation of Iran's foreign contracts since the Qajar dynasty period, and changing the country's name back to its ancient name, the Persian Empire. Among his boldest acts was to declare his support for the recognition of Jerusalem as the capital of Israel and announced his solidarity with the Israeli people while other Iranian opposition groups either tried so hard to avoid talking about Jerusalem becoming the new capital of Israel or condemned it. و رضا پهلوی هر سه مخالف اسرائیلن و نفرت شدیدی از اسرائیلی ها دارن خانوم رجبی رسما تسلیت گفت به محمود عباس هیچ کدوم نه رضا پهلوی نه مجاهدین خلق و نه جمهوری اسلامی از آمدن پایتخت اسرائیل به اورشلیم خوشحال نیستن هموطن فقط من تبریک گفتم Publicly declaring any of these ideas demonstrates a courage that is rare among Hosseini's contemporaries. In other words, big changes require a big leader. Through his behavior and actions, Hosseini has taught everyone new lessons in the world of politics that, regardless of the outcome, represents a justice that will withstand the test of time. Hosseini was the only opposition leader to stand with President Trump and the American patriots to defend their violated rights until the last moment in the U.S. 2020 presidential election. Hosseini also called on all his supporters to support President Trump and the world's patriots until the last moment, either in the elections or other humanitarian or political activities. At the cost of further censorship, Hosseini stands for concept that human beings are members of one body, referring to Saadi's poem, human beings are members of a whole and in creation are of one essence and soul. If one member afflicted with pain, other members uneasy will remain. If we have no sympathy for human pain, the name of human we cannot retain. Supporting American patriots, regardless of the cost in a political and social ground, can confidently be said to be one of his greatest actions was to train devoted restartees who are considered the main resources of this movement. These restartees, who are inside and outside of Iran, bravely carried out the restart challenges and defended the lives of their compatriots when necessary. The existence of such a combination of knowledge, courage, sympathy, and leadership makes Restart the only movement that has the ability to plan and perform fundamental changes in Iran. And Restartees owe all this to the righteous inner essence and the great man that awakened that ingredient inside them, whom they call their leader. A showman from a city of Ray who has become a powerful political leader. Although it is true that he was born in the East, he rose from the West.
و محبوبیت دو چیز متفاوته معروف به کسی میگن که مردم دوستش دارن محبوب به کسی میگن که اون مردم رو دوست داره 